I believe that many of you have heard about Sumer. The mysterious, great, and earliest known civilization along the valleys of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the historical region of southern Mesopotamia. Emerging in 4500 BC and ending around 2000 BC. This civilization records the earliest human writing. Cuneiform. It was also highly advanced in technology. Mathematics. Construction. Military. Culture. And other fields. The standard of Ur is one of the most famous Sumerian artifacts. It dates to the first dynasty of Ur during the early dynastic period, and comes from the ancient city of Ur, which was located in modern-day Iraq. It is now in the collection of the British Museum. This artifact comprises two panels. One is war. And the other is peace. The life scene at the time was depicted in considerable detail on these panels. War is one of the earliest representations of a Sumerian army, engaged in what is believed to be a border skirmish and its aftermath. This panel shows the king in the middle of the top register, standing taller than any other figure, with his head projecting out of the frame to emphasize his supreme status. The lower register shows four wagons, each carrying a driver and a warrior and drawn by a team of four equids. Cuneiform writings from this period refer to this equid as the Kunga, and had a very high market value at the time. The animals were regarded as symbols of status and wealth. A healthy specimen could be sold at up to six times the price of a donkey. The Kunga owes this prestige to its usefulness. It was used as draft animals, with smaller males and females used for pulling plows. While superior males are described in more ceremonial and martial roles, pulling the four-wheeled battle wagons and chariots of kings and gods. In the illustration, the wagon carries spare spears in a container at the front. The arrangement of the equids' reins is also shown in detail. It appears to show the draft team of equids, being controlled by strings passing through rings placed in their upper lips, illustrating how the Sumerians harnessed them without using bits. Combined with other elements such as prisoners, agricultural workers, and musicians. The 4,500-year-old artwork and texts from Mesopotamia, reveal how equids were used for travel and warfare by the ruling class. These pictures show an excavation of an elite burial complex two men northern Syria, at a small place called Umm el Mara. Dating back to around 2400 BC, this place was a main location of Mesopotamia. It was a medium-sized city. Archaeological evidence indicates that it was the largest metropolis in the Jabal Plain, an intersection of ancient trade routes, and also one of the early centers of advanced urban civilization in the Near East. It was a rare intact, unlooted tomb. Leader of the archaeological team, Professor Glenn Schwartz indicated that, it may be the oldest intact possibly royal tomb yet to be found in Syria. It contained richly adorned adults and infants. Gold and silver, pots, and animal bones. These horse-like skulls and bones are from equids, which were subsequently identified as Kunga. This is an exciting discovery. Apparently, Kunga had been used as a part of funerary animal offerings, and were a mark of maximum prestige for their owners, in life and after death. This also confirms the cuneiform records, that Kunga was a symbol of economic and political status. However, the exact nature of Kunga has been controversial for decades. Cuneiform writings describe the animal as a hybrid, but do not provide the precise nature of the breeding that produced it. So, Kunga remained mysterious for decades until January 2022, when the results were published in Science Advances. A group of palaegeneticists from Paris studied the genomes of 4,500-year-old Kunga remains, recovered at the burial complex in Umm el Mara in Syria. The study result proves that Kunga was created by a female domesticated donkey, and a wild male Syrian ass. This represents a conscious choice to have the more tractable domestic species, 
as the maternal parent for simpler husbandry. This also reinforces the likelihood that Kunga were sterile. Sumerians combined the two parents' qualities to produce stronger and faster offspring than donkeys and horses, but more controllable than wild donkeys. This evidence led to an early accolade for the Kunga as Syria's 2008 Animal of the Year. Though Kunga held its elite status for half a millennium, it was finally supplanted by domestic horses. Introduced to the region at the end of the 3rd millennium BC, horses were seen filling the roles previously occupied by Kunga after that time. Kunga rapidly disappeared from the historical record but it became the oldest example of an animal hybrid produced by humans. The Sumerians had mastered the technique of creating hybrid animals as tools to serve their own lives, which is considered to be the early bioengineering in human history. We are all amazed that thousands of years ago, Mesopotamia gave birth to a group of highly intelligent humans. As their descendants, we are also extremely fortunate in that we can gradually decipher the code of history th through the relics they left behind. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. In the following videos, we will continue to tell the wonderful story of horses and humans along the history lines.